Once a day, in our neighborhood, an old lady is seen to walk out towards the gate of her house which opened up the main road leading towards the beach to place her trash bin for the garbage collectors to take them away. People in the neighborhood called her Granny Dirty. But it was more of sarcastic calling because she was rude in nature and she didn't give out the typical lovable why people are used to in an old lady of her age. Granny Dirty lived alone in her worn down home, keeping to herself, and once a month she gets a visit from one of her five sons to bring her one month worth groceries and leaves without spending much time with her. All of her sons lived lavish lifestyles, with one being a prominent TV presenter in the country and two being successful businessmen. The youngest of the family, who was seen relatively more with the granny, was a professional sports figure. Granny Dirley could have lived a happy life with either of her sons, but her rude nature and greed to let go of her house made her irritable among the wives of her sons and hence no one was willing to stay with Granny. Granny Dirley's life went on with loneliness and despair and her morning routine of letting her trash out and vanishing into her house to never be seen again till the next day went on. One day, however, nobody noticed her putting out her trash. Two days passed by and another few days went on just the same until the people living next door noticed a pungent and strong rooting smell coming from the house. Granny Daryl lived in. The neighbors called on Granny Daryl literal. No one accepted her to reply and attempts to contact her son's friend as none of her son seems to take the dilemma seriously enough to check on her. Finally, the neighbors had to take the matter into their own hands and line with the local police. A few of them broke the door of Granny Dirley's house down and were immediately hit by the air. Concentrated with gases associated with a mutant collapse. The neighbors who were brave enough to venture further into house found the Lord Granny's crabs that laid seat on the couch in front of the living room of the house. The interior of the house was damped with cobwebs reaching to the floor from the ceiling. Granny Dirley was truly living a net nightmare of a life inside that house of hers, which she refused to move out of. Her corrupt had lost its eyes, probably being munched on by vermin, and her corrupt was puffed up with maggots eating her flesh away. A truly horrible sight. Her sons were informed and the money thrown by each of them took care of the disposal of her crabs with no proper burial or any final worries to put her soul to rest. She was truly a tragedy both alive and dead neglected by her own kin. The horror begins about a month later from her death. 
About a month later, her sons began their dispute regarding the rights to the house Granny nearly died. The sons were keen to property more than about their mother when she was alive. Finally, the son came to an agreement to sell the property and disputed the money evenly. But the real estate agents came to fixing a deal and the house had an issue with reports coming from neighboring houses of hearing moans and screams and bone chilling noises coming out from the abandoned house. Some passerby even claimed that they had seen Granny Derry walking about neglected long. The youngest of the sons had enough of the stories and decided to demolish the house down to sell off the land for what it was but every day when he came in with his breaking crew, something ominous happens which terrifies the crew to the level that they would withdraw from the site for good. Some would freak out saying that they saw Granny Derly walking inside the house. Some would get hit on back and pulled away by an unexpected shadow like Inter. Some would fall off from the roof while securing beams for the mission, telling that they were pushed from their ladders and their safety harnesses, which came off unacceptably. And finally, the youngest son couldn't find a crew daring enough to lay their hands on that house. And a few years back, the foundation of the house crumbled and the roof of the house caved in. Some of the sons of Grand Derly tried their luck in restoring the house at least the condition it was in previously before the roof caved in. But every time they repaired the roof and reinforced the foundation and add new columns to support the roof, it caves in by about a week, baffling everyone involved in the construction process. To this day, this abandoned house stands with the roof caved in it on itself. Besides the busy street covered by the bushes and trees that once beautiful the little garden of the house. To this day, neighbors say that they can still hear Granny Derry moving about the house.